Don't let anyone ever tell you that this country isn't great. That somehow we need to make it great again. Because this right now is the greatest country on earth. Joining me now, CBS Sunday Mornings, Nancy Giles, MSNBC contributor to Ray, and Sirius XM host Pete Dominic. Oh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, so, to Ray, um, you know, Bill O'Reilly said that, you know, the kind of slavery that um, oh, happened in building the White House, it wasn't slavery slavery. Uh -huh. It was kind of like... The, you know, the, the, the more like kinder, gentler, like cool kind of slavery. So why, <laughs> why, do you, why do you African Americans keep on bringing it up? Oh my God, perhaps because it continues to have an impact on our lives. What are you and talking the, about, the, Willis? And, right? <laughs> and just the structure and nature of the country. I mean, I understand that these folks don't want slavery to be discussed anymore, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. It, it would make their lives better, yeah. right? If we wasn't discussed, right? Just stop talking about the. Pro I mean, so often for conservatives, talking about race equals racism. Right. And Right. That is the problem. Right. Yeah. And we understand that is not the problem. Race is already here. It's already affecting the situation. Whether or not we bring it up, there's no race card that we can play. And oh, now race is in the situation. Right. It was there before. We just right. pointed it out. And slavery gets to sort of the heart of that. Like, just stop mentioning it. Yeah. This notion of they were well fed. I don't even know what well does he fed think they well were housed. eating. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, this is the slave going, you know, this is, uh, I asked for medium rare. <laughs> okay. And this is just clearly This is better. clearly it's medium well. So bad in, in <laughs> world it's like slavery with benefits yes right. and it's and it's crazy and I just to echo what Torre said people don't want to talk about it they don't want to deal with the very basic fact that say what you want about all the other ethnic groups that have come to this country I'm not mentioning Native Americans whose country it was yeah. okay well they didn't right they walked they here, were right? here. That's yeah. totally they were different. here yeah. yeah we came as property yeah. and I'm telling you I've gotten yeah. into heated discussions with people who have literally said property like what's the big deal get over it no, uh, no that's a big deal well you know let's, let's, go, let's, let's go to the minority let's, let's, let's go to our, minor, our, our minority in this segment uh, Pete Dominic uh, you know, and because, you know uh, my goal is to make America great again for you and make, your, and make you feel more comfortable uh, yeah. in this situation where you, you really are marginalized as a minority. Is, is Rush Limbaugh right that we should treat slavery like infidelity in marriage? Just don't bring it up in every fight. I've never been madder at you <laughs> <laughs> in my life. Not only for, let's pull back the curtain, okay? There was a time in America where all the panelists were white men. <laughs> now, now we've got three black folks yeah. in one studio. Let's just pull back the curtain. I'm right around the corner. <laughs> okay? Yeah. I blame Torre yeah. for this, though, yeah. not you, Joy. Yeah. I'm mad at you that you would ever See, ask me. the wide me. shot shows the full uh, extent of our segregation. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, can we make America great again when I can just join you in the studio? Make me am Joy great again. Never <laughs> ask me, never ask me is Rush Limbaugh right, first of all, is the premise. Uh, it's important that we mention, however, that 50% of white Americans actually believe that we face as much discrimination as black folks. And one of the reasons right for that is because that while we don't have enforced segregation anymore we self segregate the only black folks we see might be on television right. we don't mm -hmm. understand the daily struggle much less the history of struggle of people of color in this country and if you travel down south you see there are monuments of confederate generals mm -hmm. still all over the south mm -hmm. we don't have a monument to slavery yeah. mm -hmm. we don't have any of that we don't have a conversation about reparations much less any kind of reparations so we do need to be reminded every day about the history of this country especially white people. Yeah, and, and yeah. you know, it's interesting Amen. because we are the day after. Yes, Amen. Uh, right on, on, my white brother. Can I come in there now? Can I come in there? Can I come in with you guys, please? Yes, you can. 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 One day after um, Teray, Donald Trump Jr. goes to IAP. Philadelphia, Mississippi yeah, yesterday yeah. Um, for no reason. Mississippi is not a swing state. Uh, right. has, it's not a swing state. Um, but he sort of ostentatiously shows up in the place where Ronald Reagan launched his campaign right. when Mississippi was kind of in play. Right. Um, what kind of a context could there possibly be for that? What kind of a context? <laughs> I mean, look, we're shaping up toward an election where a large group of white people dominated by non-college educated whites are making one choice. And the coalition of the ascendant, you know, people of color, women are uh, clustering around the other side, right? So we're sort of at like this sort of weird loggerhead where like the white people over here and everyone else, and especially the white men, especially the working class white men are over here and everyone else is over there. This in general is not good 
for the country. Yeah. No matter yeah. what happens in November, yeah. there will be a large swath of the country that is very angry about where we are and what's going on, that their person lost. Yep. Neither side believes in the legitimacy of the other side. I mean, yeah. even though I think the Hillary is untrustworthy argument is bunk, that is what a large part of the country believes, that we believe he is unqualified and she is untrustworthy. untrustworthy. Yeah. So a large part of the country will be very, very upset and feel like their president is not legitimate. Yeah, and I think that is a good point, um, um, Pete, because no matter what happens, we will have this sort of faint toward illegitimacy uh, in the country. Um, but I want to play one more piece of Michelle Obama's speech, because we do want to talk a little bit more about it. Because one of the outgrowths of Trumpism has been this idea of sort of using Donald Trump as a way to bully, but it comes from a place that I think Michelle Obama explained really well in the way she talks to her kids. Take a listen. Mm. How we insist that the hateful language they hear from public figures on TV does not represent the true spirit of this country. <laughs> How we explain that when someone is cruel or acts like a bully, you don't stoop to their level. No, our motto is, when they go low, we go high. And Pete, I mean, the reality is that was a beautiful sentiment, but that isn't sort of the way the country has been working, right? I mean, you work in talk radio where, you know, particularly right-wing talk radio, we played some Rush Limbaugh earlier. The idea really is to go low and then just go lower. Have we reached a point where the discourse in the country is so polarized and so nasty that not only are people feeling free to attack the president of the United States, but people are actually attacking each other in the same way? No doubt about it. I mean, to get ratings in radio or in television, it really helps be nasty and provocative and mean as you can be. Uh, there's no doubt about that politicians use that to divide us as well, to get ratings, to get elected. That happens. I don't have to worry about that on SiriusXM because we don't have to worry about ratings and subscription based. <laughs> right. And if we did, I probably only have a few people anyway. <laughs> but... <laughs> But the point is, you know, most importantly, just about that with Michelle Obama, this is why she's such a good first lady, why she's such a good role model. Because when my wife and I watched that, of course we cried, of course we were emotional, but we stole that saying to raise our daughters. Right. We stole that sentiment. When they go low, we go high. That's kind of not a thing that you do. You don't just necessarily take a statement, take a theory from the first lady and use it overnight in your own home and in your own family. But that's what we're doing in our home. Yeah, and, and Nancy, I mean, isn't that sort of the subtext of what not only Michelle Obama did, but what the four days of that uh, convention really did? It was really aimed at moms. It was, yes, oh, it was yeah. totally, totally. And I'm not even a mom. And I was like, the children, the children. <laughs> totally. But it really, it moved me. And, and the thought of what kind of country you want for the younger generation, what kind of country you want going forward after you're gone. I mean, it was, it was the difference between hope and despair. Absolutely. I mean, after the last, the week in Cleveland, I like, I was like, RoboCop come to life. The only thing that made me feel better was like finding Pollyanna, the paleo, well, which is a beautiful movie about sure. spirituality and whatnot. That was the only thing that like cleansed my palate. I, I just want to jump on what Pete was saying though about um, going low and going lower. In my opinion, going low and going lower is why Donald Trump has has ascended, and right. he's managed because of that kind of train wreck ratings mentality to not spend that much money to get everywhere by saying the most deba debasing, horrible things. He gets free airtime. He has, you know, he, it's it's really boosted him. His whole campaign is totally based on kind he's of a shock job. I mean, yeah, he's a shock job. Yeah. Last word, yeah. The Republicans presented basically, you know, their convention was like the purge election meets. American History X, right? Ooh. And what the Democrats presented was love, hope, and acceptance. Now, and I, I don't believe and and that the country will choose hate over love unless the Democrats have completely misread the amount, the breadth of anger in the country. But I just don't think that we will choose hate over love. But we will certainly find out in exactly, I think, 99 days. All right, yeah. Teray and Pete will be back. Uh, and so will Nancy. So oh. we're gonna, and we're gonna let Pete come up. We want him to come no. and see us. Yes. Um, more hate. Black Lives Matter. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.